Attack was killed and four cops injured, breaking down the door of a, of a drug user just this week in New Hampshire. People died. And it's not the drugs that are killing them mostly. It's certainly not pot killing them. It's drugs laws that kill. Yeah! In April of 2012, vocal anti-prohibition crusader Rich Paul was targeted by law enforcement for his not-so-secretive sales of cannabis. Law enforcement targeting pot dealers is nothing new, but the investigation leading to Rich's arrest has ambiguous beginnings. Was it started by the New Hampshire Drug Task Force or the Federal Bureau of Investigation's Joint Terrorism Task Force? Okay. You were arrested in November of 2011 and you're charged with selling heroin, correct? Correct. And you're charged three times with selling heroin. Correct. Right? And a couple days after you were arrested, you met up with uh, Chris Jimino, correct? I believe, yes. You met with someone from the drug task force? Yes. Did you ask to see them or did they ask to see you? They asked to see me. Okay. Currently. Are you somehow attached to the FBI? I am. I'm the uh, New Hampshire State Police Trooper assigned to the uh, FBI's JTTF, the Joint Terrorism Task Force. You are, I think someone else referred to it earlier, as on loan to the FBI, I said. <laughs> Sounds impersonal, but is that fair to say? It'll suffice, yes. Okay. Uh, so you not only work, I mean, you're technically a state trooper, but you work for the Joint Terrorism Task Force. Correct. Okay. Um, and that is a branch of the FBI, or under the umbrella of the FBI. Correct. Um, do you uh, simultaneously work for the Drug Task Force? No, I do not. Okay. So in, this, in your capacity in this investigation, you were strictly acting as a federal agent? Correct. Okay. Um, uh, did you... Um, were you uh, active in coordinating um, the two agencies working together, the, the Drug Task Force and the FBI working together? Uh, not really. I was predominantly assisting Agent Christiana with this. Okay. Are you a supervisor at the uh, Drug Task Force? My son is a team leader. Uh, so is that that's you and uh, Lieutenant Mayers, or Myers? Same as Lieutenant Mayers. Mayers. Both of you are? No, he is not. Actually, it's just an assistant team leader on the team. Okay. Um, were you involved at all in coordinating um, the FBI's involvement in this case? Um, not coordinating their efforts. I was involved in the investigation of the existing between them. Okay. Did you call the FBI and ask them to come in and help out in this investigation? Were you involved um, in the case from the beginning? Was that correct? Yes. So you were a member of the team that was investigating yes, I was. this particular incident. Okay. Uh, uh, are you the person that called the FBI to come be involved in this case? No. Do you know who did? No. So. Um, you are not the person that contacted the FBI for their help in this case. Uh, I can tell you that nobody from the Drug Task Force contacted the FBI. <clears throat> nobody did? No. Okay. What you're saying now is that neither, that you, that no one from the Drug Task Force requested them to come and provide that equipment. That is correct. And you don't know exactly how it came to be that all of you were there together? What I do know is that they were working on a, a, a their own investigation mm -hmm. that I'm not privy to the information there. And it worked out that where we were working our own investigation, um, as it turns out, we were able to work. It made sense to come together and work together to sort of investigate alleged crimes. Throughout all of this, the, the FBI was paying for the, was providing the cash to the CI. To the best of my knowledge. 
Um, I mean, as a, as a case agent and you're part of the investigation, did they consult with you about what they were doing or? Um, to my earlier than this and, and prior to this, I, I believe that they provided, they paid for uh, the evidence, they paid for the purchases, um, and it was just going to continue like that. Okay. Specifically, you work for the Joint Terrorism Tax Force, is that right? I work for the FBI. You are assigned to the JTTF? I, I am assigned to the JTTF, unemployed by them. And your specific duties at the Joint Terrorism Task Force is that you were a bomb technician. Is that accurate? That's one of the many. Okay. That's one of your jobs, though. One of the many. You were in charge of setting up the surveillance equipment on the um, confidential informant who's no longer confidential, Richard D. Correct. Correct. Right. And you referred to him as, with a code name, Socrates, correct? Correct. That's the name you gave him. Correct. Right. Um, and you also refer in the beginning of the um, recording to an FBI case number. Correct. Is that accurate? Yeah. Um, and that that's that's the FBI case number. The case number you refer to, 28 RVS, I don't know the right number, 104582. That's that's our number. Is that right? Yep. That's your number. Um, so that's your investigation number. That is not the drug task force investigation. Correct. Number. So you had a separate investigation happening at this time. That's that's correct. Okay. Um, which came first, your investigation or the DTF investigation? It's, it's um, more or less simultaneous. The, the way it works is, that, um, well, I, sh I shouldn't say that. I don't know when the D when the Attorney General Drug Task Force investigation actually commence. Did you contact them or did they contact you? They contacted me. But you already had an open investigation, correct? No. no All right, so we're going to <laughs> do a little bit of a chicken and the egg thing. So they're simultaneous or, or one no, came before it, it, No, actually, I'll, I'll, I, I'm, I misstated myself. Um, my investigation was open at, at the request of the Attorney, the Attorney General Joe Casper. Okay, my sure. assistance was requested, and as a result, I opened up the matter in order to provide them that assistance. All right. Are you, well, you worked for this for this agency, correct? Yes, I did. Right. And you participated in a joint investigation with the state agency. Isn't that's, that right? That's correct. Okay. But one has nothing to do with the other, though. All right. Um, the MOU is between us and the state police is for them to, to participate on our task force. This investigation had nothing to do with the task force. This was, I can elaborate on that. Please. This, this is an extra duty. When I get a request from a state or local agency, one of my duties is to provide uh, local and state agencies with investigative assistance. And that's what I did in this matter. I was requested assistance, and I provided it. It had nothing to do with the Joint Terrorism Task Force. Who requested it? The New Hampshire Attorney General Drug Task Force. Who from the Drug Task Force requested your services? Um, I can't name one person. There are several people that, um, I'd, I'd say the one person that I recall discussing it with was um, Officer Newton. All right, so at some point, in time, Officer Newton called called you on the phone. Is that how it happened? No, this was in person. Objection has been made. And you said that you don't usually uh, work with the FBI in drug cases, right? I never have. You never have. Um, are you the person that contacted the FBI in this situation? No, no, no I was not. Okay. So you you did not contact Phil Christiana. I did not. All right. Were you present when Mr. Paul was arrested? I was not at his arrest, no ma'am. Were you present after his arrest? I, I was. And, and where was that? At the King Police Department. Did you um, speak with him? I did. Was that recorded? It was not. And why wasn't that recorded? It's not our policy. Um, I'm not allowed to record interviews. You're not allowed to record interviews. Why is that? It's, it's, a, it's against our policy. What, what's the policy? That we're not allowed to record interviews. 
and, and, and quite honestly, I wasn't interested in recording the interview. So I never went down that road. I knew, as a general rule, we didn't record interviews. I didn't want to record the interview. I didn't seek the exception. Okay, because you didn't want to. Correct. Because you didn't want anyone to listen to it? Or? No, ma'am. Okay, well, um, what'd you talk to him about? Let me, ask, let me ask you this question. Did you take any notes during the interview? I honestly couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Okay, well, what was that conversation about? I, um, it, we really didn't have much of a conversation. It was very short, actually. Mr. Paul cut it off. Okay. So what was the, convers the short part of the conversation about? Um, I basically asked Mr. Paul um, if he was willing to cooperate. In what way? We never got into um, what that cooperation was. I never got that far. You asked him if he was willing to cooperate in an investigation? Is that what you asked him if he was willing to cooperate in? That's correct. Okay, so you got that far, right? Yeah. Okay. What was the investigation about that you wanted him to cooperate in? I never... Just, you, know. you just said that you asked if he would cooperate. I did. Okay. With what did you want him to cooperate? I thought that Mr. Paul might be able to provide us some information that would assist us in another matter. Okay, what kind of information? <coughs> information, basically stuff that he was aware of, information that he was aware of. So, um, you thought that he was aware of some kind of information that would be beneficial to the FBI? That's correct. Right, and to the Joint Terrorism Task Force specifically? Correct. Um, did you want him to participate, or did you ask him to participate in the same kind of operation that was ongoing with, you know, this with Mr. Dupont? No, ma'am. Did you ask him to wear a wire? I did not ask him to, to wear a wire. Okay. You didn't ask him to put up to, but you outfit him with a wire. I, I did not ask him to do it, no, ma'am. Okay. Did you suggest it? I said that it was a possibility. All right, so you said it was um, a possibility that that would be part of the investigation. Is that accurate? I'm, I'm, I, that, that, yeah. that would be part of his You're cooperation. Just making that, would, that would be part of his cooperation. Okay, that part of his cooperation and whatever it was you were doing would be to... That, that other matter. Correct. That would be potentially to wear some surveillance equipment. Correct. Um, Uh, was he offered any kind of consideration for that? Did you offer him any kind of consideration? My question. Um, I, I, well, if, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. What was that? We, um, we told him that we could help him with the matter that he was arrested for. Um, you told him you could help him with the matter that he was arrested for that day. This matter? Yes, absolutely. Essentially. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. And so, uh, did did the matter involve activities at the King Activist Center? I can't go into those in, into that, ma'am. I'm restricted from going talking about that. Where you're headed with, with this? Commissioner George. So we're here after the first day of trial. Uh, it's just after 4:20 at Keene Central Square and you just were shocked. I don't think my camera picked it up because I was focused on Phil Christiana during the questioning, but you had a look of shock on your face during his questioning. Why? Uh, because he was lying. I mean, I suppose I shouldn't have been surprised. He does work for the government. But, uh, but yeah, uh, Philip Christiana is a liar. He knew exactly what he wanted me to do when he had me in that interrogation room in Keene, New Hampshire. He claimed he had no... Uh, he claimed that he didn't say what he wanted me to do. He did say what he wanted me to do. He wanted put me to put on a wire. He wanted me to go into, Keen, into the Keene Activist Center. For that, he said, oh, well, maybe nobody will go to jail. Then he said, and you're also going to have to do some things you don't want to do. 
And I said, what sort? Because I thought maybe he was hitting on me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't hitting on me. What he wanted me to do was entrap people at the Keen Activist Center into selling me drugs. Now, the interesting thing about this is he never asked if any of these people actually sell drugs. And none of these people do sell drugs. What he wanted was a political informant, just like when the FBI in infiltrated the civil rights movement, just like the FBI has infiltrated every political organization that is not sanctioned by either the Democratic or the Republican Party. And uh, he was absolutely lying through his teeth. He was very clear on what he wanted me to do. The other thing is he said that the first person to pull him into the uh, investigation was uh, Newton from the uh, DTF. But then he said the first time that he spoke to Newton, it was face to face. So the question is, if he wasn't involved in the investigation, what was he doing in Keene, New Hampshire, where he could meet Newton face to face? And the answer is somebody else called him, or more likely, he started his own investigation and told the DTF, I want a free stater.